Well, I'm glad to see everybody out this morning. Whether your team won or whether your team lost, you know what? God is still on the throne. And Jesus Christ is worthy of our praise and, and worthy of our honor. But this morning, I want to talk to you about your relationship with Jesus Christ. I pray that you have one, first of all. If you don't have one, we need to take care of that today because if you leave here without a relationship with Jesus Christ and something were to happen to you, you would die and go to hell. It's plain and simple. Jesus Christ is the only way. It is through him and him alone that we can have salvation and to live in heaven, to be reconciled back to God through the blood that he shed on the cross of Calvary, like that song said this morning, the God of Calvary. We need to praise the God of Calvary, and his name is Jesus Christ. But if you do have a relationship with him, where is that relationship at? What stage is it in? Are you a new Christian? Are you an old Christian? Are you a mature Christian? Are you a baby Christian? Are you drinking on milk? Are you eating meat? What, where are you at? Spiritually, where are you at? I'm going to start in Luke chapter 9, verse 23. And then he said, this is Jesus speaking to them all. And he's speaking to his disciples at this point. He's speaking to those 12 that are following him and joining in with him in ministry, he is speaking to them. He says, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Now, Jesus is saying a lot right here. And if you, if you back up a few verses, and I didn't give Cameron, Cameron this to put up, but if you go back a few verses, Jesus has just got through feeding the 5,000 and then he's talking to Peter, and he asks Peter, he says, who do the crowds say that I am? He asked him a general question. He says, who does who everybody say that I am? And I says, well, some of them say this, some of them say that. But then he gets personal with, with, uh, with Peter. He says, well, let me ask you this, Peter. He says, who do you say that I am? You know, sometimes we need to stop and ask ourselves that question. Who do we believe that Jesus Christ is? Just who is he to me? Who is Jesus Christ to Josh Garmony? Who is Jesus Christ to Trent Martin or to Don Hill? We need to ask that question today. Who is Jesus Christ? Who do you say that he is? Now, Peter said, I believe you are or Christ, the one, the Messiah, the Son of God, the one that is to come that the old prophets had spoken of. Peter said, I believe that's who you are. But we got to answer that question for ourselves. Now, I can stand up here and tell you all day long that I believe that Jesus Christ is the one that came and died on the cross for our sins, his blood ran red our sins were washed white i can stand up here and i can holler at you all day about how i believe that but it's not going to do you any good unless you believe it also where is your relationship it don't matter about my relationship right now it matters about yours and the one that you have with him so then he he continues to talk with them. He says, if anyone desires to come after me. So after Peter answered the question and said, Jesus, I believe you are. I believe you are. He says, all right then. He says, if you want to follow me, this is what you got to do. Deny yourself. Pick up your cross and follow me. You know, that's a pretty harsh statement. If we really get down to it, he says, I want you to give up everything that you have ever wanted in this world. I want, you to, I want you to walk away from it. I want you to turn your back on this world and everything that you ever wanted in it and follow me. Not only that, but I want to take it a step further. 
He says, I want you to pick up your cross and follow me. Let's think about what that cross is. You know, I think a lot of people take that cross as a, as a figure of speech saying, oh, well, that's just the hard times in this life that I've been dealt and I just have to deal with. I don't believe that was it at all. We've got to understand who he was speaking to. He was speaking to these Jews that when they saw a cross, when they heard the word cross, what they understood was death, punishment, ridicule, persecution, torture. When Jesus told them to pick up their cross and follow him, he was saying, you're about to die. You got to be willing to die if you want to follow me. That's what Jesus Christ was saying. You got to be willing to give it all up, not just the things of this world, but your life. You got to give it all for me if you want to be my disciple. You know, that's a hard pill to swallow. We want Jesus Christ, we want God when everything's going good in our life and it's smooth and it's easy. We want to praise the name of Jesus. But when, tough, when times get tough, we want to tuck tail and run back to the world. We say, you know what, that's not really what I thought I was getting. So I'm going to turn around. But Jesus is telling us, look, if you want to be my disciple, it's me or the highway. There's no middle ground. You cannot serve this world and serve me. It's just not going to happen. If you want to be a true disciple, it's all or none. You know, I think sometimes it's hard for us Christians to realize that it's all or nothing. We either give him all or we give him nothing. If he doesn't get it all, then he has no part of us. We need to understand that today. We need to evaluate our relationship with Jesus Christ today. But to deny yourself is to disregard your own interest. That's hard for us to think about. You know, I, I have things that I want to do and plans in my life. And, you know, that, that's okay. But I got to be willing to push all that away, push all that to the side for Jesus Christ. It cannot be more important than his will for my life. It cannot be more important than sharing his gospel with others. I have to be willing to say, you know what? That's going to have to wait. Or I may just not ever get to it because God may have something else for me to do. Take up your cross daily. Be willing to die. Be willing to die for your Savior. The one that was willing to, to die for you. You know, that's all he ever asked for was your life in exchange for his. You know, that, do the math on it. It's a good deal, people. It's a, good, it's a great deal. It's the deal of the century. If I guarantee you, if you walked up on Jeff Nugent's car lot and he had this deal right here, it would have a big sign pointing to it saying, deal of the century. You'll not find a better deal than Jesus Christ. He came and died because you did wrong. And he came and died so that you could be made right. And all he asked you to do is to live for him. Stop living for yourself. Stop living for this world. Stop living in sin. Be righteous, be holy, and follow him. That's all he asks. It's a good deal. In exchange, he's willing to give you heaven. He's willing to give you peace. He's willing to heal you. He wants to have a relationship with you. All you got to do is say, you know what? I'm leaving it all behind and I'm following him. Deny yourself and die to self. That's what Jesus is telling us. If you want to be my disciple, deny and die to yourself. Go to Luke 14, 25 and 28. Now great multitudes went with him, and he turned and said to them, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father and mother, wife, children, brothers and sisters, yes, and his own life. Also, he cannot be my disciple. Now that's, that's some strong words right there. 
But if you look up that hate, if you look up hate in the Greek, it means to love less. Love less. You know what? To be a true disciple of Jesus Christ, I have to put Jesus Christ above everything. I have to put him above my wife. I have to put him above my family. I have to put him above myself. I have to put him above everything. It's hard for us to do because, because my wife is sitting right here beside me. But you know what? He says we're not to walk by the flesh, but by the Spirit. If we will put God at, on top, let him be the supreme of our life, everything else will follow where it needs to. But we've got to have him above all. Go to the next verse. And whoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. You know, I think bearing that cross is, is really our priorities. A lot of it. You know, we're, we're, Jesus is saying, where am I? Where am I in your life? Am I one? Am I two? Am I twelve? Where am I at? If you, if you want to claim that I am your Savior, then where am I at in your life? I don't see where I fit in. Where am I at? It sounds good. It looks good. You make it look good. He says, but really, where am I at? If I'm not number one, then I'm nothing. That's what he's saying. If I'm not the love of your life, then I'm the hate of your life. He says, if you don't love me the most, then you don't love me at all. Go to the next. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not sit down first and count the cost, whether he has enough to finish it? What is the cost of discipleship? Have we ever sat down and figured out what it cost to follow Jesus Christ? I'm going to dare to say that most of us did not. Most of us probably on a whim and on an emotional roller coaster ride one day said, you know what, I'm going to follow Jesus Christ no matter what. And then we go through this up and down period in our life. We ride this roller coaster of emotion where God is the greatest thing we've ever come in contact with. And then the next week we don't want anything to do with him because he's not giving us exactly what we want. It's because we did not count the cost. We did not know what we were getting into. Because God says, when you come to me, I want it all. And you are struggling with your flesh that wants to stay in this sinful nature. And he's saying, look, you can't do that anymore. There's this struggle going on inside. So let us count the cost this morning. Let's find out exactly what it is that you want. I know what you need. But what do you want? You know what? He's going to let us choose what we want. That's the loving God that I deserve, or that I serve. Is he says, you know what, Josh, if you want life, you can have it. If you want death, I'll let you have that too. He gives me the choice. He gives you the choice. What are we choosing? On a daily basis, he says, pick up your cross and follow me daily. What are you choosing today? It's, it's an everyday choice. I have to get up every morning and say, you know what? I'm not serving Josh in this flesh. I'm serving Jesus. So what are you choosing today? Go to Luke 9, 57 through 62. This is a glimpse of what the cost of discipleship is. It says, now it happened as they journeyed on the road that someone said to him, Lord, I will follow you wherever you go. Maybe you've made that statement. I want to ask you a question. If you have made that statement, how well have you followed through? Have you followed him? Every day, every step, every moment, every hour? I'm going to dare to say not. Because we all have sin in our life. We all need forgiveness. We all need to ask for forgiveness. The Bible tells us that. It's plain and clear and simple. Plain cuts right to the chase. 
says you're, you have sin in your life. If we have sin in our life, then we're not following Jesus Christ. We're not perfect. We need help. We need to be put back on the right path. And that's what Jesus offers. That's what he's offering today. And Jesus said to him, foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. He says, look, you might not have anything in this world if you choose to be my disciple. He says, I'm not going to promise you all the riches that this world has to offer. But you know what he did offer us? All the riches that heaven has to offer. Everything that belongs to Jesus Christ can belong to us. He says his father owns the cattle on a thousand hills, and he says, I will give it all to you if you will just follow me. He says, I will give you an inheritance that is worth more than gold and silver, that is more precious than anything that you can think of. I'll give it to you if you'll turn away from these sins. If you will turn away from this dark and sinful, wicked world, he says, I will give it all to you. I will adopt you as my child, and you can have it. But you know what? Some of us want to, we just want to live right here in this world, right here in this flesh, come to church on Sunday and pretend like I'm okay. That don't get it, people. A relationship with Jesus Christ is more than coming to church once a week and and shaking the preacher's hand when you walk out the door. If that's what it took, then there's a lot of us going to heaven. But the, the scriptures are plain and clear that there's only a few that find that narrow road. Only a few. Go to the next verse. Then he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. You know what? When Jesus calls us into a relationship with him, it's time to go. It's time to follow. When the Holy Spirit is nudging at you and, and pulling at you, it's time to go. We can't wait around. We can't hesitate. That's what he's saying. This young man saying, I don't want to go yet. When my daddy dies, that's when I'll follow you. And Jesus says, hey, you come now. You worry about that. Don't worry about that. You follow me. Don't worry about it. It's what it cost. Go next. Jesus said to him, let the dead bury their own dead, but you go and preach the kingdom of God. He says, look, I'm calling you to do this. Go do it. I'm telling you to do this. Go do it. What's God calling you to do today? What's he asked you to do today? Have you asked him what you can do? I guarantee you if you have, he'll give you an answer. Go next. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. That's a, I want you to hear that statement. I want you to listen to it. I want you to think about what this means. It says, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking backward is fit for the kingdom of God. If you look backwards while you're plowing a garden, what are you going to end up with? A crooked row. He wants it straight. He wants our lives to, to ride the straight and narrow. You know, when he uh, was about to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he told Lot, Lot and his, his family, you know, look, you better get out of here. You better run. Don't look back. Do not look back. What did she do? She looked back. She, she got turned into a pillar of salt. He's telling us, when we decide to follow Jesus Christ, when you make him your Lord and Savior, and you say that you are going to follow him, do not look back. Do not look back at this old world and say, you know what, I had a little fun back then. I want to go back and play. He says, don't do it, because if you do, you're not fit for my kingdom. But you know what he 
still offers us forgiveness. Even though we mess up, he provides a way back. He wants to restore you this morning. He wants to heal your broken heart. He wants to mend you back together. He wants to give you a new heart. He, he, whatever you need, he's, he's there for it. But we've got sin in our life that we need to take care of. He says, if, you, if your road gets a little crooked, you're not fit for my kingdom. But I'm going to tell you today how you get your row back straight. You come to the altar and you ask for forgiveness and you say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. Set me back on your path. Make my row straight again. And he'll say, absolutely. Absolutely, I will. But we've got to be willing to come. We've got to be willing to humble ourselves and admit that we were wrong and that he is right. That's a hard thing for us to do, but it's necessary. Go to Luke 14, 33. So likewise, whoever, whoever of you does not forsake all that he has cannot be my disciple. Forsake everything. Sometimes we've got to let go of our possessions so that we can be freed from the possessions that hold us. You know what? That new car, we got to be willing to let it go so that we can be free from it. So that we can be able to serve Jesus Christ. We have to let go of this world. Now, I'm not saying that it's, not, that it's wrong for you to have a nice car or a nice home or all those things. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is you've got to be willing to let it go if God so calls. If he calls you up and says, sell it all, you're going here. You've got to be willing to do that. You know, how many of us are, have really thought about it to the point to know exactly what you would do if God said, give it all away? If he called and said, you've got to give it all away, would you? Are you willing to give up this world? Go to Luke 9.24. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. You know, if we, if we want to keep the life that we have right now in this old sinful world, in this old fleshly body that's evil and corrupt, he says, you know what? If you save that life, you're going you're to lose the spiritual life. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. If we're willing to give up what we have right now, this, this body that's corrupted, this world that's evil, we can have eternal life. Go to 25. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and is himself destroyed or lost? I, Jesus asks us a simple question here. He says, basically, what in hell do you want? Because, I'm just going to be honest with you, there ain't nothing there worth having. He says, what is worth more than your soul? That's a, I mean, it's a straightforward question. He's saying, he's peering in the eyes of his disciples, and he's saying, what is worth more to you? Me and life or sin and death? What do you want? I go ahead and I'll answer the question for you. It ain't going to profit you anything to gain this whole world and lose your soul. It's, it, it will not value anything. It's not worth anything. This world is coming to an end. But the kingdom of God shall last forever. Go to the last verse. For whoever is ashamed of me and my words, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in his own glory and in his fathers and of the holy, of the holy angels. You know, I think sometimes we 
come to church, we think we're living a good life, we sit in the pew, we pretend like everything's all right. Yeah, well, I think we most of us do a pretty good job of genuinely looking like a Christian. But you know, then it comes down to that coworker that comes up to you and he says, you know what, man, I've been struggling. I've been having a hard time. He says, looks like you got everything figured out. What are you doing? What do you do? You tell them about Jesus Christ or you say, oh man, I just, yeah, I'm lucky. You know, I've been lucky. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's been a good ride so far, you know, but you know. You know or, or, do you, or do you share Jesus Christ with them? Do you tell them why you have joy in your life? Can you tell them why you have peace in your life? You know what? If we are not willing to share Jesus Christ with others, then we hate them. And we hate Jesus. If we're not willing to share his love with others, we hate them and we hate him. And that, that's pretty, pretty harsh, but that's, that's the reality of it. That's the way God sees it. He says, if you do not love other people enough to share my gospel with them, then you hate them. And you hate me. And if you don't want to tell others about me, he says, if you're ashamed of me, he says, I'll be ashamed of you. And when you stand before me on judgment day, I'll say, depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I never knew you. He says, you cannot be embarrassed. You cannot be ashamed that you belong to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Now, while somebody would be ashamed of being a child of God, I'll, I'll not know. I want to scream it at the rooftops. I want this church to scream it at the rooftops that I belong to God. I believe in Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. He died on the cross for me, and I believe it. But you know what? Sometimes I think we want to bury it deep down inside and be like, you know what? Let's just hide this from the world. I, I might be outcast. I might not be looked at like, I'm, like I want to be. Hey, if that's what you want, depart from me. Get away from me. I'm turning around. I'm not looking back at you. He says, look, I don't want nothing to do with you. If you don't want nothing to do with me, I don't want nothing to do with you. He's pretty plain and simple about that. Chris, as you, as you come up, so back to the original question, who do you say that Jesus Christ is? Where is your relationship with him? Do you have one, first of all? If you do, where is it at? How strong is it? You know, we've had all these uh, shootings lately, and you have the church shooting, and, you know, but I always think about that little girl at Columbine. You know, I, I would dare to say she's probably been the, the mention of 10,000 sermons. But what she did is what we better hope we would do. When it came her time, when that cold gun was pressed to her head, and she said, do you believe, and that man asked her if she believed in Jesus Christ. She had a choice to make. You know, I, she very well could have died either way. She very well, I, you know, I don't know. But you know what? She said, you know what, I'm going to stand on this solid ground. I'm going to stand on Jesus Christ. And she answered yes. And she, she paid the ultimate price for that. She, she lost her life, but yet she gained it. You know, I'm not trying to play on your emotions, but I want you to think, and I want you to count the cost of what it means to really follow Jesus Christ. Are you or are you not? You know, as you stand, you maybe you've been playing the game of a Christian. I don't care if you've been playing it your whole life. If you're tired of playing, today is the day to get real. 
Today is the day to say, you know what? I've, I've been posing. I've been acting like I'm something that I'm really not. Maybe today's the first day you've ever been in church. Forgiveness is open. Forgiveness is here. Grace can be found. That grace was freely given for us on a cross. The blood was shed. The sins can be forgiven. Everything can be made right that is wrong in your life today. But you got to be willing to turn away from it. You got to be willing to walk away from, from the pain, from the sorrow, from the heartache, from the, you know, I don't know what, I don't know what you're waiting on. He says, one day, if you walk away from this life, one day you will enter in a life where there's no more pain, where there's no more sorrow, where I will wipe away the tears and there'll be no more death. But you got to be willing to turn your back on this one. You know, maybe you just need to come and be thankful that you have a Savior. You know, we, we just got through with Thanksgiving. And I'll tell you, the older I get, the more thankful I am that I have a Savior named Jesus Christ. You know, I don't thank Him near enough. I don't fall on my knees near enough to say thank you. I'm, I just don't. But you know, the, the older I get, the more I do so. Because I'm starting to feel the weight of this world coming on this body. Now, I know it's not going to last forever, and I'm good with that. I'm glad it's not going to last forever. I'm glad I've got a Savior that says, I'll bring you into a home that will last forever. Yo, know, are you thankful this morning? Do you need forgiveness this morning? Do you need healing this morning? Is your heart broken? Are you hurting? If you are, come. The altar's open. Jesus Christ is waiting. He says, if you want to be my disciple, walk down the aisle. Walk out of this world and into mine. He requires a life for a life. He gave you his life and he wants yours. That's the deal. He says, and I'll make it all right. This world will come to an end and I'll still be standing. And everything that I have will be yours. He offers us an inheritance. He offers us peace and love and joy. Understanding. Wisdom, everything that you'll ever need, he offers. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgive. You know, if you feel the Holy Spirit tugging at you, telling you to come to this altar. I want you to remember the words that you just heard a few minutes ago. If you are ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. you know, are you sitting there thinking, you know what, I'm not going up there. Them church people are going to think bad about me. You know what, don't be worried about what we think. Be worried ab about what God thinks. Be worried about what Jesus Christ thinks. You know, if you sit there and you are ashamed to walk down that aisle because you need something from, from your Savior, then shame on you. And shame on us if we make you feel like we're judging you. Because I promise you, if, if we are judging you, we need to be right behind you. 
I want this church to be a place where you can come and be healed. I want this church to be a place where you can come and be forgiven and restored. Jesus is coming. Oh, come. You're not too far 